How to make your own media server with Jellyfin and DigitalOcean. Jellyfin is a free software media system that lets you stream your media to any device from your very own Jellyfin server. In this video, I'll take you through the process of installing Jellyfin onto your Ubuntu Linux cloud server using Jellyfin's very own Ubuntu install script. DigitalOcean will be my server host provider of choice in this video demonstration. I'll be using their droplet service, which is what DigitalOcean calls its virtual private servers, VPSs, also known as cloud servers. To run the Jellyfin install script on DigitalOcean, I'll be using an SSH client called Putty. After that, I'll show you how to upload your media, such as movies or TV shows, from your local device, such as your computer, onto your Jellyfin media server using FileZilla. Finally, I'll show you how to access and configure Jellyfin to add your media library folders so that you can stream your media using one of Jellyfin's supported clients. Great, so with that explanation out of the way, let's begin by creating our DigitalOcean droplet and installing Jellyfin using Jellyfin's Ubuntu install script. Firstly, open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link to DigitalOcean. You'll get $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out DigitalOcean free for 60 days. I'll put my referral link in the video description below so you can just simply click on it for your convenience. On this page, if you don't already have a free DigitalOcean account, you'll need to create one so you can sign up either by entering in your email address, picking a password, and then clicking on create free account, or you can sign up using a Google account or GitHub account. Once you have created your DigitalOcean account, sign in to DigitalOcean. Now I already have a DigitalOcean account, so I'm simply going to click on sign in. Once you've done that, you'll be signed into your DigitalOcean account. And once you've completed all the necessary steps to get your $200 of free credits, you'll see your free $200 in credits at the top right hand corner here. Once you're on your DigitalOcean control panel, navigate to the top right to where it says create click on create. You'll then get a list of DigitalOcean services. The service that we're looking for is called Droplets, which allows you to create cloud servers. Click on Droplets. First, we'll need to choose a region for our droplet. It's important to pick a region which is closest to you, as that will give you the best streaming quality. As you can see, DigitalOcean offers a decent amount of regions to pick from. I'm going to be going with London, so I'm just going to click on London here, as this region's data center is the one that's closest to me. Once you've picked your region, scroll down until you see where it says choose an image. By default, OS should be already selected, and underneath, you'll have various operating systems which you can pick from. The one that we want is Ubuntu, so make sure Ubuntu is selected. If it isn't, click on Ubuntu. Underneath, you'll need to pick the version of Ubuntu, so click on this arrow here and roll with one of these Ubuntu versions. I'm going to be going with the latest LTS version, which is Ubuntu 22.04 LTS x64. Once you've picked your Ubuntu region, scroll down until you see where it says choose size. For droplet type, you have two types. The first one is shared CPU and the other is dedicated CPU. Now, when you're first starting off, I recommend going with the basic plan, which is the cheapest droplet option and perfect for somebody just starting their media server. Scroll down a bit until you see where it says CPU options. You have three options here. You have regular CPU, premium Intel, or premium AMD. The regular CPU options come with a disk type of SSD and the premium Intel and premium AMD come with NVMe SSDs. Now the regular of course will be cheaper, but I really like the speed at which the NVMe SSDs give. So I'm going to be going with premium AMD, which is already pre-selected for me. Underneath are your plans. It ranges from $7 a month to over $100 a month. Now when you're first starting out, the $7 a month media server should be enough. It gives you one gigabyte of RAM, one AMD CPU, 20 five gigabytes NVMe SSD and a thousand gigabytes or one terabyte of bandwidth. For this video demonstration, I'm going to be going with the $14 a month server, which simply doubles the specs of the cloud server. Again, you can go with the cheapest droplet of one gigabyte of RAM, except the CPU, which is still one AMD CPU. Again, you can go with a $7 a month plan. That should be enough for your Jellyfin media server when you're first starting. You can always upgrade your DigitalOcean droplet later. Scroll down until you see where it says choose authentication method. Click on password and then create a root password for your DigitalOcean droplet. So I'm just going to do that now. This root password will be the password used to log into our DigitalOcean droplet and run the Jellyfin install script. Continue to scroll down until you see where it says hostname. For the hostname, delete what's already in there by default, and then you'll need to enter your own unique identifying droplet name. So you can identify it from the droplets list on the DigitalOcean control panel. So I'm just going to call my server Jellyfin dash server, and that will be easily recognized by me. All that's left to do now is to create our droplet by clicking on create droplet. I'll be back with you guys once our droplet is up and running. All right, I'm back. 
And as you can see, our Jellyfin droplet is now up and running, and you'll know it's up and running by the green status symbol on the left-hand side of your droplet's name. Hover over your droplet, navigate to the right-hand side of your droplet's IP address, and click on the copy button to copy the IP address of your droplet. My droplet's IP address is 104.248. 173.89. Your droplet's IP address will be unique to your droplet. Once you've copied your droplet's IP address to your clipboard, the next thing we'll need to do is install Putty. So open up another tab in your browser and navigate to the following URL address, putty.org. Once you're on putty.org, you'll be taken to the following page. Simply click on download Putty to be taken to the Putty download page. Now Putty is the SSH client that I'm going to be using throughout this video demonstration. Putty is mainly a Windows SSH client, so if you're using an another operating system, you'll need to use an alternative SSH client. Now I've already installed Putty, but if you haven't already, I'll put a link in the video description to a video of mine which takes you through the step-by-step -step process of downloading and installing Putty. Once you've got Putty installed on your computer, you can minimize your browser and locate the Putty shortcut on your desktop. If you don't have a Putty shortcut, just simply search for it on your computer. So all I'm going to do is open up Putty by double-clicking on the shortcut. Once the Putty client opens, you should see basic options for your Putty session and underneath there'll be a text box which says hostname or IP address. Paste in the IP address of your digital ocean droplet that you just created. Leave the port as 22 and make sure the connection type is SSH. Then click on open. You'll then be greeted with a putty security alert which informs you that the server's host key is not cached in the registry. You have no guarantee that the server is the computer you think it is. Now this is a normal putty security alert whenever you first connect to a new server. Now of course we know this is our digital ocean droplet so we're going to be connecting to it you can either click on accept, connect once or cancel. I'm going to click on accept. Once you've done that, maximize your putty terminal window. At the very top, putty says login as. In here, enter the word root and then hit enter on your keyboard. Underneath, putty asks you for your root password. This is the root password that you created for your digital ocean droplet. Enter that password in here now or copy it and then simply right click to paste and then hit enter on your keyboard. You'll then be logged into your digital ocean droplet. Now what we'll need to do is run the Jellyfin install script for our Ubuntu server. To do this, open up your browser and navigate to the following URL address, jellyfin.org slash docs slash general slash installation slash Linux slash hash Ubuntu dash repository. This link will be in the video description below for your convenience. Just a quick note on this Jellyfin install script link, due to the Jellyfin team constantly updating in their documentation, this link changes quite often. Therefore, when you're watching this video, the link may have changed. That's not an issue, as the latest link will always be in the video description below for your convenience. Simply just click on it to be taken to the correct web page for the Jellyfin install script command. Once you've clicked on this link, look for the curl command, which is right here. To the right of the curl command, click on the copy button to copy the curl command. Next, open back up your putty terminal window and then right click to paste in the curl command. Once you've pasted it in, hit enter on your keyboard. Your server will then ask you if this looks correct, press enter now to continue installing Jellyfin. So the script has found the following details from the following directory, real OS Ubuntu, which indeed it is, repository OS Ubuntu, repository release Jammy, this is for Ubuntu 22.04 LTS, which is the version of Ubuntu we're running, and CP architecture AMD 64, which is all correct, so simply hit enter on your keyboard. The Jellyfin install script will then begin installing the Jellyfin media server onto your digital ocean droplet. I'll be back with you guys once the installation has completed. During the installation process, you might be greeted with the following purple screen, which asks you which services should be restarted. Simply press tab on your keyboard once to highlight the word OK, and then hit enter on your keyboard. Jellyfin is now installed and will begin starting up. Once Jellyfin has been fully installed and is now running, you should see a green status symbol here for jellyfin.service and the status of active running. And underneath that, Jellyfin tells us how to access our Jellyfin media server in the browser, which is where we'll need to finish up setting up our Jellyfin server. We'll talk about that in more detail later in this video. And right at the bottom it says, thank you for installing Jellyfin and happy watching. Great, so we've installed Jellyfin on our DigitalOcean cloud server and we've got it running. So we can now close out of the Putty terminal window. Press the X and then you'll be greeted with a small window which says Putty exit confirmation. Are you sure you want to close this session? Click on OK. The next thing we need to do is to create folders in our DigitalOcean server so that we can upload our media to. These folders containing our media will then be used by our Jellyfin server to add media library folders so that we can stream. So to create folders and upload our media, we're going to need a tool called FileZilla. Open up another tab on your browser and navigate to the following URL address 
filezilla-project.org. Again, this link will be in the video description below. FileZilla is an FTP solution. It supports SFTP, which is the secure file transfer protocol, which is what we're going to be using to create folders and upload our media to. Now I have a video already created, which shows you step-by-step -step on how to install FileZilla onto your computer. I'll link it in the video description below and as a card at the top right-hand corner of this video. Unlike Putty, FileZilla is available on a lot of platforms, you want the FileZilla client. As you can see, it's available on Windows 32, as well as 64, which I'm currently on, Mac OS and Linux. So once you've downloaded the FileZilla client and installed it, you can minimize your browser to be taken back to your desktop. You should then see the FileZilla client shortcut on your desktop. Again, if you don't, you can search for it in the Windows search box. Now, before I open up the FileZilla client, I just want to talk about your media. Each media file will need to be in its own separate folder. So for example, for this video demonstration, I'm going to be uploading the Blade Runner movie onto my Jellyfin media server. So here's the Blade Runner folder. So I'm just going to double click on it just to show you it real quick. And as you can see inside, we've got one video file. So each individual movie needs to be in its own individual folder when you are uploading them to your Jellyfin media server. That goes for TV shows as well. Let's say you have 10 seasons in a TV show and each season has 10 episodes. You'll need to create one folder and then a folder for each season. And each of the episodes can be in in the season folder without a separate folder for each episode. So all 10 episodes can be in the season one folder. So once you've located your media that you're going to be uploading onto your Jellyfin media server, what you'll now need to do is simply open up FileZilla. So FileZilla client shortcut is right here. I'm just going to double click on it to open it. On the left hand side is your local files and on the right hand side will be your Jellyfin media server files. So the very first thing we're going to need to do is connect to our digital ocean droplet once again. In the host, you're going to need to put in the host name or IP address of your digital ocean droplet. To do this, open back up your browser and go back to your digital ocean control panel. Locate your Jellyfin droplet and then click on copy next to your droplet's IP address. Open back up the FileZilla client. Paste in the IP address of your DigitalOcean droplet. For the username, it's going to be root once again, and then enter in the root password of your DigitalOcean droplet. For the port, it's going to be 22 for SFTP. All that's left to do now is to click on quick connect. And if you now look on the right hand side, you're in the slash root directory, which is your root user directory. Underneath that, you can see all the files in the slash root directory. Now what we want to do is go out of the root directory and just simply go to the slash directory. To do this, simply left click on the slash directory. You're now in the slash directory and here are all the files and folders in that directory. The directory that we're interested in is called media. Double click on the media directory. If you look at the top now on the right hand side, you can see you're in the slash media directory and in this directory, it's completely empty. So we're going to create some folders in this directory. To do this, right click in this empty directory and then click Click on create directory. A small window will open which asks you please enter the name of the directory which should be created. So just simply begin typing the directory name. So let's call our first directory movies. I'm going to keep it all in small caps so it's easier. Then all you need to do is click on OK. And as you can see you've got a new folder called movies now. Next let's create another directory so right click on a blank space and then click on create directory. This time I'm going to call it shows and then click on OK. Great so now we've got our movies directory and our shows directory. We can now begin all uploading our media to these folders. Now, of course, you can have other folders names if you want, such as music, cartoons, or anime, etc., etc. You can customize your Jellyfin media server to your own preferences. So I'm going to be uploading the Blade Runner movie into the movies folder. So what we need to do is go into the movies folder. To do this, just simply double click on it. I'm now in the movies directory. And as you can see in this folder, it's blank. To upload media onto our Jellyfin media server, we're going to need to locate our media files on our local device. As you can see, I'm currently in the desktop directory, where of course my Blade Runner movie is located. Now, if your media files are in your desktop like me, you'll simply first need to find them using these folders here. Once you're in the appropriate directory, locate your media in that directory, which is desktop for me. To upload a specific media, simply left click on the folder and hold, and then drag it into the movies directory in your Jellyfin media server, and then let go. That empty directory will now begin filling up with the media that you have dragged into it. So if you look to the bottom here, you can see I have one queued file, which is being uploaded as a copy onto my digital ocean droplet. You can see it's at 2.5% right now. And I'll be back with you guys once a copy of this Blade Runner movie has been fully uploaded onto my Jellyfin media server. All right, I'm back. And as you can see in the queued files tab, there aren't any anymore. And in the successful transfers tab, 
there's one, which means our media has been successfully uploaded onto our DigitalOcean server. To check this, I can just double click on my Blade Runner folder and inside the folder, you can see our Blade Runner media file has been successfully uploaded with our folder. To go back to the previous directory, you can just double click on the two dotted folder. Great, so you've got all your media uploaded onto your Jellyfin media server. So what you can now do is close out of FileZilla by clicking on the X. Now what we're finally going to do is configure our Jellyfin media server via our web browser. First, go to your DigitalOcean control panel, locate your Jellyfin media server droplet, and again, copy the IP address of your droplet. Open up a fresh tab and type in the following URL address, http colon slash slash and then paste in the IP address of your digital ocean droplet then type colon 8096 so again I emphasize that it's HTTP not HTTPS colon slash slash the IP address of your digital ocean droplet colon 8096 which is the port we're going to be accessing our Jellyfin media server on. Once you've typed this in, just simply hit enter on your keyboard. Your browser will then navigate you to the Jellyfin welcome page, where you'll need to go through the setup wizard. So firstly, we need to start by first choosing our preferred display language, which by default is English. If you'd like another language, just simply click on this box and select it. So I'm going to be going with English and I'm going to click on next. Now I'll need to set up a username for our Jellyfin media server. By default, the username is Jellyfin, but I'm going to delete that and I'm going to enter in websplaining. For the password, this is going to be a unique password, not the same as your DigitalOcean root password that you created previously. So this password will be tied to your Jellyfin username. So I'm going to enter one in here and then I'm going to confirm it by entering it in again. Once you've chosen a username and a password for Jellyfin, click on next. You'll then need to set up your media libraries. So what this basically does is allows Jellyfin to find our media in our DigitalOcean server. So the two folders that we created, movies and shows, we're going to need to show Jellyfin where these exactly are. So to do this, simply click on the plus symbol to add your first media library. At the top, it says content type. Click on the drop down menu and select your first content type. So I'm going to be going with movies first. I'm going to leave the display name as movies. And for folders, we're going to need to select the path of our movies folder. So click on the plus symbol here. Jellyfin will then show you a list of directories. So firstly, we know the directory we need to navigate to is slash media slash movies. So first we need to navigate to the slash folder. So I'm going to click on the forward slash here. I'm then going to scroll down until I find media. There we go, there's media right here. So I'm just going to click on media and in media, we want the movies folder. So just click on movies and then you don't need to select the individual media files. You just need to select the main folder which will contain all your movies folder. So in the movies folder, you could have multiple different movies but you don't wanna select these movies folders specifically. You just want to select the general movies folder. So slash media slash movies is the folder we want. And then all you need to do is click on okay. Next, scroll down until you see where it says library settings preferred download language click on this box select your language so I'm going to be going with English country let's just go with the United States I'm going to leave as much as possible as default I'm just going to keep scrolling down until I see where it says chapter images so I'm going to enable chapter image extraction and also extract chapter images during the library scan. So for the first option here, it basically allows clients to display graphical scene selection menus. And for the second option here, it generates chapter images when videos are imported during the library scan. So I'm going to check mark both of these as it just makes the experience of using Jellyfin Media Server more visually pleasant when scene selecting in a movie or TV show. All that's left to do now is to click on OK. Great, so we've successfully added our first media library, which is movies. Now you can do this again for each individual media library that you want to add. So I'm going to add one more just for completionist sake. So I'm going to click on this plus symbol here. The content type this time is going to be shows. I'm going to click on this plus symbol here. I'm going to click on the forward slash. I'm going to select media and I'm going to select shows and then I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to scroll down to where it says library settings. I'm going to choose English once again. And for the country, I'm just going to go with the United States once again. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the very bottom, leaving everything else as default. Now, of course, guys, you can customize any of these options to your liking. It's just this is a video demonstration, so I'm trying to cut to the chase. And I'm going to enable both these chapter image options and click on OK. Great, so I've added two media libraries. One is movies and one is shows. Now, movies has one movie in it and shows is empty. Your shows folder will probably have some media in it. Now, click on Next. 
preferred metadata language, I'm going to be leaving it as English and United States as the country. I'm going to click on next. Configure remote access. I'm going to leave everything as default and click on next. And then we're greeted with this message which says you're done. That's all we need for now. Jellyfin has begun collecting information about your media library. Check out some of our apps and then click finish to view the dashboard. So I'm just going to click finish now. Now what we'll need to do is sign in to our Jellyfin media server. So I'll need to enter in the username that we picked and the password. So I'm just going to enter in my username now, which is Websplaining and my password. And then I'm going to click on sign in. And there we go. We're on our Jellyfin media server dashboard now. We can see my media at the top here, which has two types, movies and shows. You can click into them to see a list of all your movies and shows. Underneath that, you can see your latest media editions, which in my case is latest movies. And as you can see, I got one movie called Blade Runner. If I click anywhere along the movie's thumbnail, avoiding the play symbol, I'll be taken to a detailed page, which tells you about the Blade Runner movie. This is everything your Jellyfin media server generates for you from the media file you upload its metadata and the internet. So you can see it's got some ratings here. So you can see it's got 89 on Rotten Tomatoes. You can see when the movie came out, the name of the movie. You can see the movie is called Blade Runner. It came out in 1982. It's about two hours long. This is the specs of the video file that I uploaded. And this is the audio specs. Here's a brief description. Here are the cast and crew where you can go through the entire cast and crew if you like by using these arrows to navigate. You can click on each of the actors and actresses profiles here to get detailed descriptions. And you can see the scene selection right below it here, which you can navigate through if you want. I'm going to scroll back up to the top here. And to play the movie, you can you can either click on play here or you can just simply click on the video thumbnail to start the movie. You also have some additional options here so you can watch a trailer, you can mark it as played if you want to keep track of everything, you can add it to favorites and you've got even more further customizable options here that you can click on these three vertical dots. Now I'm just going to play the movie just for completionist sake. And once you've done that, the movie will immediately play. I'm just going to mute the movie here as it's fairly loud. I'm going to resume it and you can scene select by just hovering over the movie here and clicking on a particular area exactly like other media services, but this is a media service that you actually have full control over. There are many options here, so you can fast forward, you can skip a scene, you can select the quality of your movie, you can go full screen and many, many options. I'm going to go back here. So I just wanted to show you exactly how video files look when they are being played. So you can go back at the top left hand corner or go to your home screen. You can also click on these three horizontal lines to be taken to the menu where you can access the settings or go to your dashboard. Here you have further Jellyfin media server settings that you can configure to your heart's content. If you've added more media to your server and it's not showing up immediately in your media selection, what you'll need to do is click on scan all libraries to get Jellyfin to scan the media libraries that you added for updated media content. You have also more options to the top right hand corner. I'm just going to go back to the home screen now. Great, so that's just a quick overview of Jellyfin briefly. There are so many customizable options that you can perform on your Jellyfin media server to personalize it even further. So you can change many of Jellyfin's aesthetics. You can add more users. So you can make users for your friends and family. You can even point this URL address that you need to access your Jellyfin media server to a personal domain name, so such as websplaining.com. There are so many options. Also, you're not just limited to streaming your media through your browser, you can also use one of Jellyfin's many different clients. So to find the clients that Jellyfin offers, you'll need to navigate to the following URL address, jellyfin.org slash downloads. Here you can see all the clients that Jellyfin offers for various devices and operating systems. So for example, if you have an iPhone, you can download Jellyfin Mobile for iOS by simply clicking on the App Store button here and it will take you to the App Store for Jellyfin Mobile. Same again for Jellyfin for Android, you can just simply click on the Play Store here and it will take you to Jellyfin on the Play Store. There's also Android TV and Fire TV. There's many different kinds of media players, even one for desktops. All right, so that pretty much concludes this video on how to make your own media server with Jellyfin and DigitalOcean. I just want to reiterate that all links used in this video will be in the video description below, along with all the commands used. So please check out this video's description for further details. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Why is it so hard?